السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, dear brothers and sisters and colleagues and uh, colleagues and uh, uh, friends globally wherever you are whenever you are السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته this is our uh, first uh, talk with you in the new year and uh, in this talk as I mentioned in the Arabic talk two days ago, we will be talking about something quite difficult in building the civil society that we are aiming to build it. I mentioned this in this talk in Arabic two days ago about the geometry or the metrical lines building the civil society. Somebody might think, what is geometry to do with civil society? Civil society is about organization, civil society is about actually humanitarian work, about social work, about advocacy, about uh, development, about, about, about all this, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, human rights, about uh, other things. And uh, so, but in every aspect of life, we have to use the geometry or the engineering as it is mentioned by other science. Before I go to the depth of the discussion or the talk today, uh, let me uh, take you into the index of our discussion today. And I urge you to use the Zoom link because there's a lot of drawing in this talk and it will need you to follow up through going slide by slide with me. When I say geometry or engineering, this is how Allah has created mankind and created all the creation of God. Through this engineering processing processes, as well as the geometry of engineering itself. And inside our science and technology, we study, I mentioned a lot of names of science now, to enable you and myself to relate what happen, was happening in different science to what I'm going to talk about today. We talk about botany, we talk about uh, zoology, entomology, hydrology, biology, genetics, genetic engineering, uh, geology, and uh, uh, theology. Uh, medicine, uh, physiognomy, and uh, climatology, uh, geomology, uh, metallurgy, space science, astronomy, astrology, physics, marine science, engineering science. All these are based on the process of engineering, the science of engineering and the science of geometry. This means that actually this kind of mathematical, scientific, engineering sciences prove that the origin of creation comes from one source, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at the body of the man, you and me, male and female, can we count how many components in our body? No way. No way. No way. How many cells? How many components? How many nuclei? No way. Arteries, vessels, capillaries, cells, different cells, bone cells, skin cells, cartilage, and others. Blood cells, white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets. We cannot count them. We cannot count them. We cannot count them. They might be in trillion, no, not in trillion, in quantillion and sextillion. These are numbers that we cannot count. And those sextillion or quantillion as figures or as numbers inside the body of the man or the body of the woman or the body of the animal or the body of any creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is managed, controlled, and directed by a system, both by the Creator, 
who bought all these sextillions of cells and components and nuclei in our body and he's managing it inside the heart inside the body of each one of us so if we are going to look at how many billions of people people i'm talking about human being now living on earth and the inside them these sextillions of components and their body managed by one source with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very 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 magnificent engineering quality and geometrical quality I'm talking about human being now needless to say what could be happening to animals birds plants fish climate and others as I mentioned the names of the uh, science which controlling or studying this. So if Allah gave us this ability to understand this different science, which I mentioned only 20 of them, and inside our body there's many, 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 many components which you cannot count. It's not in billions, it's not in trillions, it's not in quintillion, it could be in six trillion and more and more and more and more. But he is managing it. That means that Allah wants us to look at his kingdom and manage it in a very geometrical or engineering style like he is controlling the life of every being on earth. Whether this being is a living being or the metals and the others as we mentioned in the science and technology. So here we prove the, the signs of the oneness of creation and the oneness of lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before I go to the actual talk, I need to congratulate our brothers and sisters, Christian brothers and sisters who celebrated yesterday, actually uh, Christmas from the Eastern churches, which is the Orthodox or uh, churches and the Coptic churches in the world. Congratulate them to all of them. Now we go to this talk today about, about what? About geometric lines building civil societies. To correlate it with the geometry of the creation of life on earth by Allah. How many cells in our body? How many nerves? How many nerve roots? All these sort of things cannot be counted, but Allah knows it. How many leaves are falling every day and how many leaves are growing every day and how many birds and fish and animals being born every day and how many of them are dead every day and so on and how many grains sand, 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 sand grains and others actually covering the desert and the other places in our talk today we'll talk about the introduction and the geometric lines building civil society the parallels the path the structured composites which compounds and the conclusion the purpose of this talk today, which is in the first week or the second week of the new year, is to challenge young people. I mentioned this in my talk a week ago, which you called about my account and accountability for 2020, that COVID, just let me remind you what I said, that COVID-19 did not imprison us in our dwellings, in our houses, in our bedrooms, nor did it scare us, no way. No way, no way. On the contrary, we took our precautionary measures seriously to, pro to be protected from its deadly effects. At the same time, we became what? We became progressively active to create a new culture. To create a new culture. Just let me to adjust. To create a new culture. Okay for the civil society sector inside COVID of last year we've been trying to create a new culture inside the COVID philosophy of thinking of horror such a culture will be coexisting inside the COVID-19 could be COVID-20, could be COVID-22, could be 25 we don't know when COVID is going to end okay what this culture is going to do with us to draw the new societal path 
and dimensions for humanity's future. We are talking about humanity and we are talking about the future of humanity. Say it again. During that time of the lockdown of last year, we have created a new culture. Such a culture will be coexisting inside the COVID-19 pandemic to draw the new societal path and dimensions for humanity's future. This will let other societies living with us to help in the process of drawing the future and the collective direction of our path. This is what we are challenging COVID and this message for us to challenge the young people. We are going to challenge you young people to stand up and come and follow us or be with us. And the spirit of our culture, what is this? The spirit of our culture is do not be scared, do not be afraid. Do not be scared, do not be afraid. Okay? But be careful, active, optimistic, connected, progressive, and be ready for any change as well as be ready to make the necessary change to save humanity. This is, the, this is actually the spirit of our culture. Don't be scared, be careful, active, optimistic, connected, progressive, and ready for, the, for any change to affect you and your society, as well as making any necessary changes. This is the introduction. In our talk today, we are talking about two parts. Part one, we'll talk about the major structure lines in the society, Part two will be next week, we'll talk about the internal crossing lines. Inside the major structure lines, there are three lines, talk about them. The parallels, 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 then the path, 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 then the structured component or composites. But next week, we'll talk about the internal crossing lines, which are crossing, entangling, symmetrical, and sequential. I am still... I know, I know that some of you will keep saying, what is that to do in several side sector? We need to wait to listen to what I'm going to talk about with you. These are some that I'm, I'm, I'm going back to you, uh, my friends, to use the Zoom link to look at all the slides which are in front of you and all the drawings. There are some of the lines I'm, I'm, I'm putting here on, on the slide, many different lines. Some of the lines are straight, some of them are circular, some of them are axial, intersecting, zigzagging lines, curved lines, twisted lines, branching lines, vertical, horizontal, and diagonal lines. These are the different kinds of lines and more and more. So in the talk today, we'll talk about the parallel. All of them are lines, parallels, path, and structure components, which I mentioned some of these lines. Let us start with the first one, which is the parallels. What are the parallels? What's the definition of the parallels? The parallels represent the straight lines that will never meet. Will never meet. And you can look at the slide on the zoom. Will never meet at any point with one another. That's why we call them parallel. Don't meet one another. It's number one. But why? What are we going to use the methodology of parallel? actually as parallel line in, in writing history, in writing history, and writing history. How history should be written by the contemporary people who lived through its era of time. In different places, different, different cultural atmosphere within such an era of time. Or they can live in different periods of the agreed era of time. This is how can you start to write history in a very parallel way, in a very parallel way. For example, if you want to write the history of a city of Basra or London or Cairo or uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Aleppo or uh, Dhaka or Islamabad or Washington or, 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 or in the first 30 years of the 21st century or in the first 30 years of the 15th century. What to do? What to do? What to do? We should do the following. Parallel. 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 Number one, in parallel, we have 
and at the same time together whom to bring together whom fair credible learned experienced and specialized witnesses who lived this era of time you have to bring those people who are going to write the history in one room or in different rooms it's number one then we have to create for them or them themselves they can create for themselves what the most suitable parameters the most suitable parameters to follow when writing the history of this era of time they have to go with certain agreed parameters but if we want to write the history of of, of uh, Iraq or of uh, Britain or of USA or of uh, uh, Syria or of uh, whatever it is and of a country we should use the same the same methodology of writing the history for Basra of the city but within the same within the within on, on the village level on the township level on the city level on the district level, so we can all go like a symphony or a harmony to write it according to the same principles and the same parameters then at the end of the day we'll be able to produce what i called actually encyclopedica historica culturica artistica monumentica this is my new terminology which i mentioned encyclopedica historica culturica uh, artistica monumentica encyclopedia because encyclopedia for the whole country historica because we talk about the history actually and culture because it represents different culture inside the country artistica because it's a piece of art to collect and write all this actually monumentica because it's going to be like a great monument for the country that we are going to produce for them But if what happened if you want to write the history, the past history, hundreds and thousands of years ago, like the ancient Egyptian, like actually the Persian, like actually Babylon, like actually the Greek, the Roman, uh, like the ancient Chinese, uh, the ancient Indian, like actually the Ottoman, like actually others and others and others. What to do? We do the same. We only have to gather the most credible, fair, knowledgeable, culturally, religiously, experienced, specialized, and diverse scholars and historians. Bring all them, those people together. Okay? All right? After agreeing by them, or they agree, they themselves they have to put the parameters for how to write the history of the past, the ancient history of this area. Okay? Here is the warning, as I, as, as I put it in red in the slide, we should not leave it, this one, to political views and opinions of one government, one leadership, one school of thoughts, one race, one culture, or even, most notoriously of all, the victorious revolutionary or colonially invading powers and groups. We should not never never leave it to those people at all they will twist the history they will change the history they will make it fake and they will create a fake history for yourself choose them only never leave it to them some of you might might ask why you focus on history why you are talking about civil society what is that to do with history because what we have been what has been happening now and we see it, and what has been happening for centuries, which I consider is a crime against humanity. Crime against humanity is not only when you go and kill people, destroy towns and cities and districts and countries and displace people and make them refugees. No. Crime against humanity when you see people, names of great men and women who spend their lives sincerely defending human rights, social justice, peace, freedom, safety, tranquility for the whole of humanity. You see, their names have been deleted, deleted, deleted from the history books. This is for me, is a devastating time. It's happening as we speak globally everywhere. 
they are not only the, they were not only defending those people that were deleted their names from the history books. Uh, they were not only defending human beings, but they, they they were defending the rights of existence of every creation of God came created by Allah to serve a human being and serve humanity. So what's happening nowadays? Let me go and zoom in. Okay. Some of the ruling executive authority in a dictatorship countries, particularly military and security schemes, governance schemes, got deeply involved in running and driving every juncture of the civil life of the citizen and shrinking the civil liberty spaces. Those people who are dictators shrinking the civil liberty space and interfering and mingling through the civil life of every individual citizen. How? By doing the following. By doing the following. Number one, changing the national social culture of the people and bringing new culture, not suitable for the people. Introducing new and dubious social values, sidelining, removing the role models from the history books, creating new role models, having different and notorious values, creating many doubting, many doubting atmospheres around the credibility of the societal icons. This actually kind of dictatorship regime which you are facing nowadays globally, whether they are military run or security run or individual run, are doing that, unfortunately. Still we're talking about history. The danger of not knowing your what is the danger of not knowing your history? What is the danger of not knowing your history? I see it's extremely uh, frightening that people don't know their history. The nation who do not know their history cannot live a sound, sustainable life to protect their path, which will enable them to build the dimensions of more prosperous a much brighter future for the generation to come. They can't, and they will never, they can't, they can't, they can't. They will be, in my own view, will be like those little, miserably looking, vulnerable street children who do not know their parents, and whether they were abandoned children, not knowing their parents, or orphans to dead or absent but known parents. History is extremely important for each and every one of us. And I remember this in a discussion in World Economic Forum in 2006 when one president of one certain country, without mentioning his name, said, forget about history. Forget about history because history is dividing us. I'm telling you, this man is dead now. He's saying this because the history of his nation, the history of his people, is very dubious. That's why I don't want anybody to talk about history. This is history for us is the major element of building the character of the individual citizen. That's why within the civil society we have to build such a character and to enable it to build the society hand in hand through knowing who are they their history, their culture, their values, to enable them to know their identity and to have their identity. The second component in the major lines, actually, inside major lines, as I mentioned before, uh, major structure lines, is the path. What path means? Or path, as it was S at the end. They are like roads or direction taken by sides, and you can see the drawing on the, in the slide. They are like roads or direction taken by societies to find what? To find the most effective solutions for the short, medium, and long-term problems. And when a society is facing a problem, they create a path for themselves, find the solution out for their problem. Such societies will follow the flow inside the path will follow the flow inside the path. 
through which they will determine the society will determine the aims and the objectives of this path until the whole flow reach out to their safety belt stability and sustainability so once a society is hit by dangerous problems they have to cre they create automatically a path to find a solution for their problem the more we have of societies in our country or our nation expanding horizontally then horizontally in the fields of history geography on the land or vertically in the fields of science technology culture and values the more we will have different paths many different paths that will determine the future solutions created by such societies for their own problems i say it again the more we have of societies in our country expanding horizontally in the fields of history and geography on the land or of the land or vertically in the field of science, technology, culture, and values, the more we'll be able uh, to have different paths that will determine the future solution created by such societies for their own problems. This means, what does it mean? That the relationship between the numbers of paths developed by societies the number of people lived or living on this geographical area and their history is proportionally correlated. Proportionally correlated. So this means that the relationship between the numbers of paths developed by societies, the number of people lived on this geographical area and their history are proportionally correlated what is the definition of proportionally correlated in mathematics two there's two variants two varying quantities are said to be in the relationship of proportionality and multiplicatively connected to a constant that is when either of the ratio or their product yields a constant. They will need a constant. Okay. The value of this constant is called coefficient of proportionality or, proportional, or proportional, pro, proportionality constant. Let me give you an example for you to make it easy because mathematics sometimes become very difficult for people to understand, even myself. For example, if we are living in an area which we are 1 million people in this area. The water consumption by the 1 million people will be less than the water consumption in the same area by the same, by 2 million or 3 million or 4 million. This is proportionally correlated. The more people you have, the more proportional, proportionally correlated the water consumption will be. The less people you have, the less water consumption will be proportionally related to the number of people. The amount of water consumption by a citizen is proportionally correlated to the numbers of citizens living in such a society. Fine. This is actually how to, to, to relate the correla co co proportionally correlated factor inside the society. We have to be aware that inside a dictatorship, I'll come back to dictatorship scheme because most Unfortunately, a lot of countries are suffering are suffering badly from those actually uh, dictatorship schemes or regimes. We have to be aware that inside dictatorship regime, the numbers of societal paths, like we are talking about the roads created by societies, will be not proportionally correlated, but will be inversely co inversely correlated, not proportionally correlated. So the more repression. The more suppression, the more fear, the less paths will be produced by the society. Will be inversely, proportionally correlated to the iron fist control 
of the civil liberty space. This is what's happening and you can see it in a lot of places. The more restriction imposed from the regime on citizens, the less societal path will be created by them. And this is what we see it. I don't want to mention names of countries, but you will understand what I'm talking about. What is the value of this path? We talk about the parallels to write the history, not we're talking about the path. What is the value of this? They are considered to be the prime and most natural element within the direction of the flow of those of these processes, enabling them to develop and grow their societies and empowering their citizens to make the positive and required social changes, but not in isolation of what's happening on national, regional, and the global level. I say it again because I know that this is like a lesson of mathematics or geometry which is difficult for me to relate it to people as I actually can see the drawing which I mentioned to you earlier to keep looking at the zoom link not only listening from the uh, Facebook the value of creating this path they are considered to be the prime and most natural element within the direction of flow of the, this process enabling them okay to develop and grow their societies inside the path and inside this actual process and empowering their citizens to make the positive and required social changes but not in isolation of what's happening on national regional and global level the third component in the major structure lines is the structure itself or the structured component or composites the structure compounds or composites what is a structured compound what what do you call it i said parallel lines i said uh, the second one which is the path created by the society the third one is the structured composites or compounds it is a natural development of building the social infrastructure through creating social blocks or masses. Naturally, the society will build social masses within the path of the society to try to save or to develop its own society. Naturally, it will develop and build social masses or what you call it social blocks. What is the function? Such social masses or blocks will call them civil society organization. What is the function of these masses? Number one, it will be linking and connected, connecting every day, as you can see from the drawing or from the images in front of you on this uh, uh, slides, maybe the three-dimensional, four-dimensional uh, uh, images of connect, very complicated process of connection inside this drawing. So the first function is of the of the of the, actually the this structure the components or composite them what what I call them a uh, civil society organization is to link and connect these paths with one another. So I've got fifty or hundred or sixty or seventy or forty paths and this this societal blocks or societal masses will connect the paths together. So to let the different path go to the same direction together. And that's what I call civil society organization. This is the first actually function of the uh, structured composites, which you call them the social blocks or social masses. Okay, this is number one. Number two is these masses will be doing also what? Managing and directing the flow of the societies or the sites inside the path. So they manage and direct the flow of sites inside the path as well as they connect each path to another. It's also what called actually, 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 actually civil society organization. Different kinds of civil society organizations. So they direct and manage the flow of society within the path. Then they connect paths together. So they let all the paths work harmonically, synchronously, synchronize one another to the same direction. It's not right. 
and this is what that statement I've mentioned, to find social blocks are not connected together. And in the third one, so the, the social blocks, which is civil society, has to be connected together. Then they connect the different paths together. The third one, they direct and manage the flow of society inside the path. Three, three functions for the social blocks or the social masses. They have to be connected together in harmony. They have to be connecting the different paths together. Then actually they have to manage the flow of the societies inside the path to go to the same direction. Okay? That's what we call it. Uh, they, it's not right, again, to find such social blocks are not connected together, communicating with one another and building partnership between themselves. Okay? Also, it's not right to find out that each path is flowing in isolation with others. They have to flow together. They have to flow together. All of them going to the north, all of them going to the east, all of them going to the west, all going to the south, all going to whatever it is. They have to flow together. Not in isolation of one another. But what happens if this is inside this dictatorship regime, which creates a fragile country, a fragile state, or failing state? Such a dictatorship scheme, as I mentioned before, will always create fragile states. There's a lot of countries now, I call them fragile states, in spite of the fact they have a lot of money, they have many people, they have a lot of technology, but there's no freedom. There's no civil liberty space. There's no civil uh, society organization. Fragile, that means from the bottom, there's a lot of holes. Any, any dubious group can come and knock the structure of such fragile state. Okay. Also, it's not right to find out that each path is flowing in isolation to other path. This only happen or could happen inside fragile or failing state that repress and suppress their civil society organization and shrink their civil liberty spaces. For us, if you want to create or to build together the integrated comprehensive social infrastructure for our society, for our country, for our nation, for our region, what we do, we must allow, we must allow and protect the growing dimensions of the culture, which I mentioned at the very beginning. The culture of what? The cultural philosophy of thinking of what? Ah, well, this is where all the repressing regime are controlling and blocking. The cultural philosophy of thinking of networking, connection, communication, and building social partnership. This is the culture, which I mentioned about it at the very beginning of my talk. Between whom? Between different societal components, composites, and structured masses. Once they stop you from communicating, know that this is a repressive regime. Communication and connection is protection. If we want to build the integrated comprehensive social infrastructure, we must allow and protect the growing dimensions of the cultural philosophy of thinking of networking, connection, communication, and building social partnership between different societal components, composites, structured masses within the flow of every path as well as between different paths together. Within the flow and between different flows as well. This actually is like the, sync, the process of synchronicity inside the path and between different paths together. And this is the role of the social masses or the role of the social blocks which are called civil society organization. Okay? Such a structure, such a cultural philosophy of thinking will be based on what? Uh, this is very important. This is very important. This will, will be based on free, innovative, free from freedom. Which free from cheap or the 
now free from freedom, innovative pioneering abilities of whom? Of the empowered, loyal, dignified citizens. At the very beginning, if we want this integrated, comprehensive social infrastructure to happen, we have to respect the citizen, give him or her the dignity, to protect their dignity, so they become loyal, and to empower them. So, to respect them, to make them loyal, to, 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 make, to empower them and make them loyal. Once they are loyal and empowered and dignified, they will create this free, innovative, pioneering, they will have, they will show us, they will show us this innovative, pioneering solution to society. But without respect, without respect, without empowerment, they will never become loyal. And they will never produce the innovative solution, innovative and pioneering solution to us. In conclusion, in conclusion, what to say? What I am talking about today, what we are doing and what we want you to do, young people, is not a magic. It's not magic. It's not juggling. It's not astrology. It's not indiscriminatory or random practice of thinking. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. But it is based on scientific knowledge of facts figures, practiced and tried successful experience. This is the challenge of 2021. What we are doing and what we want you to do, young people, is not magic, juggling, astrology, or indiscriminately and random practice of thinking, but it is based on scientific knowledge, facts, figures, practice and tried successful experiences. It's also based on something else, our belief, our belief, okay, in the more and what, in the moral values of whom, the moral values, cultures and needs of whom, of societies that we claim that we are helping. We keep standing up, help, 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 support, 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 actually, it's also based on our belief in the moral values, culture, and needs of society that we claim we are helping. Societies that we want to save from what? From darkness of ignorance, unconsciousness, unreasonableness, unreasonableness, bewilderness, confusion, and being astray. This is what we want you to believe in. If you want to champion them, you have to believe in their cause. Young people, consider us to be like your fathers, mothers, grandfather, grandmother, and, 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 and. And we will, as senior in age, be eliminating those dark roads for you with one of these two methods. If you can look at the slides. Number one, we will take the risk of taking the first step. The most deadly and dangerous step is the first step. Inside the darkness of societal ignorance. To eliminate its road, its road path with our souls, spirits, and lives. Even if none of you or the very, very, very few of you join us. Because of the lack of resources, that's number one, or inability of you to understand the message, number two, or being distracted by the very compelling challenges threatening your existence. But we're still going to go ahead. We're still going to go ahead. We're still going to go ahead. Number one. Number two will eliminate for you as well, the long, steep, rocky, and dangerous dark path by what? By lighting a very small candle where it is light will never go beyond the fewest step we walked. We light this candle. 
because don't have any more resources because we are because of the lack of provided resources to allow a few more people young people to join us and second one we will illuminate for you the long steep rocky and dangerous dark path by lighting a very small candle where it is light will never go beyond the fewest steps we walked because of the lack of provided resources to allow fewer more young people to join us we are determined to help and we will walk the walk inshallah but if we want with you or if you want with us to build the flow inside the different societal path if want together to build this you young people have to drive us through the urging power of your Im immortal creative souls providing us with the hope you are the one who are going to give us the hope your hope is going to be driven from your deeply rooted steady and stable belief which is lying in your heart it's you who are going to give us the hope we are walking through this path inside the corridors and vestibules of the created life by Allah that we will the created life of our created life to worship Allah we are inside this life to worship Allah and and through such worship we will spread the principles of social justice freedom fairness and respecting the dignity of humanity including animal birds habitats climate as well as other creation were created by him to serve human beings this is our message and this is our path and this is our dimension and so direction and this is our mission as well young people young people are you ready I said in my previous talk uh, a week ago, I'm challenging you. Are you ready to join us? Or are you going to sit down in front of television, counting the number of dead people of COVID, saying hopeless, hopeless cases, who are going to have no future? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? And here's the challenge to join us. Are you ready to achieve the hopes, fulfills the dream of whom? and see through the vision of the poor people the poor the displaced the marginalized and bewildered bewildered disenfranchised powerless people are you ready are you ready are you ready i'm saying it again are you ready to join us to achieve the hopes fulfill the dreams and see through the vision of the poor displaced marginalized and bewildered this enfranchised powerless people are you ready or it's hot air hot air discussion armchair warrior and nothing 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 are you ready to walk to are you ready to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messengers happy with us are you ready or you talking you talking you talking you talking are you ready to carry the burden of responsibility as mentioned by the Quran in the Quran, in Arna al Amat al Samawat wal Ardu al Jibal, Babayna and Yamna for Hamla al Insan in Nakan Zamajur. Allah has offered the responsibility as a, as, as a thing to the mountains, to the heaven, and everything, and they refused. Are you ready to carry this, this burden of responsibility or not? Are you ready to offer sacrifices for others? Are you ready to sacrifice something for others or not? It's not, it's not a joke. It's not a rosy road, a rosy ride. No, no, it's not. Are you ready to walk the walk and talk the talk with us? We will walk the walk and talk the talk with you. If you are ready. If you are ready. If you are ready. If you are ready. Please. Let us join hands together. This is my hand to you.
and you can see it. But don't sit in despair and do nothing. Nobody will die of COVID. Nobody will die of anything. Nobody will die before his or her time of death will come. I remind all of us with the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, if the hour comes and you can see the mountains walking like, like cotton, like fluff, and the sun is rising from the west, and all the major signs of the day, to, the day of judgment is coming, and you have this vegetation, small vegetation, okay? Prophet Hassan said, plant it. Don't wait for the result. Your duty is to plant, not to see the fruits. Here, my final message to all of you. We are ready to walk the walk. We are ready to talk the talk. We are ready to make the change. And we are going to make the change, whether you are with us, or you are not. So if we can join hands together, we'll be making the change and letting our change impacting the positive change of any society to enable the society to build the resonance as well as future civilization for humanity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah bless you. I'll see you inshallah next you next uh, week inshallah. And the second part, second part will be talking about next week. Second part will be talking about looking uh, zooming in about uh, the other four lines, uh, which they are crossing the internal crossing lines. Uh, we call them crossing entangling symmetrical and sequential lines of building the circuit through the structure and the values and other things. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.